Hey guys, DIY Maniac here. In today's video, I'm going to be making my own custom keychain holder. The one I have now, I've had for many, many years. My best friend bought it for me, but I find it's magnetic and every time you put the keys on, they fall off. So I'm going to be making a wood one, routering the edges and putting some nice hooks on it. I'm going to kind of follow the same system I did when I made my custom coat rack here. I just bought a piece of lumber, routered it, bought some hooks, stuck it on, made it the size I needed. Because in the stores, you can't always find the size that you need. So you got to make your own. And that's the same with this. I need to make it about 24 inches in length and I'm going to be putting six hooks on it. So follow along as I get that done. Here's the piece of wood I bought. It's a one by three by four foot long pine. I'm only going to need 23 inches, so just under two feet. So that gives me extra material in case I make a mistake. I could always redo it. And for the hooks, I bought six of these dark colored hooks, as you can see here, which will hold the keys. And the board itself, once finished, is going to be painted white. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut this to length. As I said, we need 23 inches. So I'm going to cut it to length and then we're going to get to the routering stage. So I've marked my 23 inches I'm going to need. Next thing you're going to want to do is take your speed square so you can ensure a straight line. Now, yes, you could cut this on a miter saw and get a straight cut, but I don't want to whip out my miter saw for such a small piece of wood and such a small cut. So I'm going to be cutting it with a handsaw. So I like to mark my line to make sure I stay true. So I put my speed square take my marking marker and make my line and then I'm going to come back with my uh, handsaw and I'm going to cut that to length. So the next thing we're going to want to do is come back and decide on what profile we want to give our piece of wood. So as you can see here I have a selection of different router bits and if you look here we have our different profiles and I was going to go with this one here to match the coat rack I made. So as you can see this is the profile it's going to give us. So I'm not going to go over the routing step because I'm hoping you guys already know how to use a router. And if you don't, don't be scared of it. Get some extra wood. Practice. You're going to make mistakes. I did at the beginning. But once you get your technique honed in, well, then you're going to get a lot better at it and a lot more confident. You know, the trick is you want to make sure that your bearing is riding against solid material. So when you set your depth on your router, you want to make sure that your bit when it comes down, let's see if I get a camera angle here, comes down, you want to make sure that your bearing is going to be riding against solid material and it's not going to be lower because then you're just going to dig into the wood and you're not going to get that profile. So you want to make sure that your full width of your bearing is riding the wood and I'll tell you why. I made it once where only half the bearing surface was riding the edge of the wood and that made that edge a little too thin and it started chipping off. Now maybe that's because of the quality of the bits I'm using. I can't speak to higher quality bits, but I know with these ones, I need to have the whole bearing surface touching wood. I can't have it halfway down. It has to be all the way. I mean, obviously you can come up a little more, but you're not gonna get your full profile. So I like to get it so 100% of the bearing surface is touching. So that's a little pointer I have. I'm not saying it's the way to do it or the proper way, but through my experience of routering, that's what works for me. Guys, this is an important thing we have to think of. Now we have a small piece of wood, a one by three, so we don't have much width to it. Now we want to clamp this down to our work surface so we could take our router. Now, if you have a bigger router like I do, the pad or the foot of the router takes up a lot of space before the bit gets to engage. If you have a clamp here, it's not going to work. It's going to interfere. So here's my workaround for that. I pre-mark and pre-drill my mounting holes, meaning these are the holes I'm going to be using to mount the finished piece to the wall. So I mark those out where I want them to be on both sides. I pre-drill them, as you always should, especially on, on pines. You don't want it to split when you're with the grains. And now what we could do is we could sink screws down to the work surface in order to hold our material in place while we pass our router throughout the whole contour of the wood. So that's a workaround and we could take advantage of our um, pre-existing mounting holes and not have to make new holes in the wood that we later have to fill. So just a little trick I wanted to give you guys. So here we can see the piece of work of wood is now uh, securely fastened to the work surface. So I pre-drilled my holes, I countersunk my holes because you don't want your screw heads 
above the surface of the uh, of the wood so it won't interfere with your router as it comes through but also for a nice finished look when it's mounted on the wall a nice countersunk and on both ends and now this gives us perfect access for our router to come all the way around we don't even have to unbolt it or turn the wood around we could bring our router all the way around and router our edge so that's what I'm gonna do so now I routered the edges I got the profile that I was looking for now the next step is to go over with my sander I'm gonna gently sand the edges it's not gonna need much it already has a nice clean cut to it so I'm just gonna give it a, a little bit of a rough sanding and then we're gonna hit it with some white paint so that's pretty much the way it looks Look on both it's the uh, mounted mounting side but I'm happy with the way it came out so I'm gonna go ahead now and mark out my holes for my hooks so what you want to do is you want to figure out how many hooks are my putting and what's the spacing going to be in between hooks so you're going to measure your length how many hooks do I have divided by that many that's my spacing in between I'm going to pre-mark my holes pre-drill them and then paint um, the reason I pre-drill before painting is because once I painted it, if something were to happen, let's say I slip with the drill and the drill bit scratches the surface, I gotta start all over again. So I like to mark out my hook locations, pre-drill my holes for my hooks, and then paint, and then all I gotta do is screw them in and I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then when I come back, I'll show you guys how it looks. Hey guys, so here we can see the finished product. The hooks are installed onto the wood. The wood is installed onto the wall, and this is gonna give a much better hold for my keys than the magnet was. So I'm really happy with that. So in the end of the day, it cost me about $15 and maybe a total of 30 to 45 minutes of my time. And we have a nice um, keychain rack. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thank you very much for watching.